30. Uh, both at For Other House and at IBC, whatever issues are, are being raised by parties are being addressed by the two teams. I suggest we let them proceed, and, and then again, we can revisit any arising issues tomorrow morning. But so far, both our teams are saying the process is ongoing. We should not trouble ourselves for now. Thank you very much, CJ. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> Chief Justice, uh, Deputy Chief Justice, Your Ladyship, my Lords, Justices of the Supreme Court, my address will be followed by Apollo Boya, who acts for Cherera, the Vice Chair, followed by Jotham Aroa, who acts for Commissioner Justice Nyangaya. He will be followed by Jeremy Jenga, who acts for Commissioner Francis Wandeli, Wanderi, followed by Gordon Ogola, who acts for Commissioner Irene Masit, and then finally Mansu Issa, who will uh, address the court on behalf of the four commissioners collectively, as I will be addressing this honorable court on behalf of the six, four commissioners collectively. So My, are we giving each one of you 10 minutes? Or has we'll, we we'll, we'll, the, Within the one hour, so we yes. put there one hour. Yes, we'll and distribute then amongst hour, we'll ourselves. Yes. We hope to do it within that one hour. Your ladies, my lords, the first submission, fundamental submission I'd like to make is that when this honorable court retires to consider the judgment it will deliver, this court be guided by the fact that it is the position taken in this court by the four commissioners being a majority of the IEBC that should inform this court's decision, not the views of the minority. The official position of the commission is as per the views and affidavits of a majority of the commissioners. And that has to be so in law. The reason being that under the Constitution, and in fact under the statute, the IEBC is a corporate entity. Therefore, in the absence of consensus, its decisions as an institution are by the majority. So do not depart from that principle, a principle that has found judicial anchorage and recognition in a number of decisions cited by my colleague uh, Paul Mwangi, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the minor care decision, the Michael Kamau case, and the other decisions, corporate decision, and that position has been addressed and I do not, do not want to take the time of the court by going through it again. With regard to each one of these four commissioners, I ask this honorable court to bear in mind that each one of them went through a very rigorous vetting by the National Assembly, at which there was full public participation before they got appointed. So that anyone who had any issue with any of them, that was the time to raise the issues. Again, the law is clear about how one can complain about a commissioner enjoying constitutional security of tenure. So do not be influenced with innuendos and insinuations about these four commissioners. They were vetted by the people's elected representatives. 
Now, coming specifically, this is the second fundamental summation I'd like to make. This so-called walking out from bombers. Look at the affidavits of the four commissioners. The vice chair saw two affidavits, so there are five affidavits in total. And I invite this noble court, when it retires, to read through those affidavits in their entirety. We adopt them. We rely wholly on the affirmance in those affidavits. And you will find in those affidavits that all that these four commissioners we are demanding of the chair at bombers at the tail end of the telling and the verif verification. Their narrative, which I invite this court to accept, is that they were not involved in the telling and verification, and in particular regarding the 27 constituencies. So they were demanding of their chair. You cannot bring a paper here and tell us that these have been verified and tallied by the chief executive. The work of the chief executive is to implement decisions of the commission. He is not part of the commission. Any more than the registrar, the chief registrar, implements, or any registrar of the high court, implements the decision of the judges, not the other way around. So they were saying, we need to tally and verify the results in respect of these 27 constituencies. And the chair would not allow that which was typical of the relationship between the chair and these uh, uh, four commissioners. And a twist is being given that it is these four commissioners that wanted to force a runoff. It is the exact opposite, your ladyships and my lords, and that is what we state in the affidavits. It is them who were asking, how do we confirm that the candidate you are about to announce has received 50 plus one votes? And his response was, are you trying to force a runoff. I am not conducting another election. So this acrimonia relationship is what was there between the chair and his two allied commissioners and the other four commissioners. Now, I would like to submit that the four commissioners were fully justified in saying we cannot own results we have not tallied and we have not verified. The law has been referred to this honorable court severally that it is the commission that should do the verification and the tally. This legal notice that appointed uh, the chair as the returning officer, you've been invited to hold that that uh, legal notice, that regulation is unconstitutional and valid because it contradicts the Constitution and the Elections Act. But beyond that, it is the chair himself alone who appointed himself as the re returning officer for the presidential elections. You will not find any minutes of any meeting by the commission appointing the returning officer. So quite apart from the fact that it was unconstitutional, it did not have the authority of the commission. I would like to cede ground to my colleague Apollo so that we operate within the 60 minutes accorded to us. I ask that this court uphold the position of the four commissioners, that the results that were announced were not the results tallied and verified by the commission. I thank you.